Oh, you're going here? <laughs> going back here. You don't want to stand. You don't want to stand in front here. Okay, we all ready? Yes. All right. Okay. Thank you, everybody, for being here. It's, what what a nice crowd. This this is a, a great occasion, and I'm I'm proud to be here with Speaker Terzai and Mike. I want to thank you for your leadership and getting this bill uh, across the the finish line. Um, House Bill 202, as you know, makes it easier for our children to succeed in school, and prepares them for a more successful uh, and, and hopefully family-sustaining career in the workforce by removing the Keystone examination graduation requirement for everybody in a career and technical education field. Pennsylvania is home, as we all know, to a diverse workforce that is second to none and that can compete anywhere, whether they're working in the classroom, in the lab, in the shop, in the field, or the garage. Uh, and what we're trying to do with this act is, is make sure that, that those citizens, those students who are always striving and succeeding across a wide variety of, of ri wide variety of fields have the ability to have that shown uh, in their academic career uh, while they're in primary and secondary school. With this bill, Pennsylvania will recognize that diversity in a way that I don't think we, we have before. We will no longer hold all of our students to the standard of a keystone examination that too often does not reflect the reality of a large sector of our students' educational experience. With the passage and signature of this bill, our students in career and technical education will be able to use the skills they've learned in career and job readiness programs to demonstrate the depth of their knowledge rather than an exam that does not reflect the education they've received or the career they're going into. Because we all know that passing a high school exit exam is not the sole measure of prof proficiency, especially when it comes to career readiness. Pennsylvania needs to enable our students to demonstrate their knowledge, their skills that they have learned through multiple measures that reflect the reality of the jobs they're going to go into, the career they're going to go into. During my time as governor, I've traveled to schools and career centers across the Commonwealth, and I've seen firsthand the breadth of the skills that our students are learning. I especially remember one, one class where I saw somebody who had spent a number of years, actually two years, training and saw that what he could do uh, with welding. He could weld a seal that I, I know it would have taken me 10 years to learn. I would never have been able to do as good a job as he did. We need to recognize that in our education system because our economy needs people with skills that are much broader than, than the skills that I think the existing Keystone exam uh, recognizes. There's no reason that the skills that this student has learned are any less valid or valuable than students who receive their education, as I did, wholly in the classroom. We're a commonwealth blessed with a wide variety of career opportunities and industries in our economy that our young people must enter if we want to stay competitive in a global economy. We need our citizens to be provided the necessary skills that employers need and to take the jobs and succeed, helping our industries thrive and help our families to grow. With the passage again of House Bill 202, these students will be measured on the merit of the skills they've earned rather than through a test that does not reflect their experience or their futures. I am proud to be here to sign House Bill 202. And I now want to introduce Speaker Mike Terzai to say a few words. Speaker. Thank you, Governor. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Governor, you are always so gracious, and uh, this was certainly a collaborative effort. Uh, we are so honored to be here with you today. And uh, my good friend Mike Tobash, my uh, uh, co-sponsor on this legislation, and, and certainly want to thank our friends in, in the Senate. And, and uh, we had support on both sides of the aisle for what I think is, is uh, in, important legislation. Before I, I get any further, though, uh, Kurt Kiefer is uh, one of my very, very good friends from back home. And uh, Kurt came to me to discuss this issue with uh, fellow administrators in uh, uh, career tech uh, schools across uh, the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Kurt, can you just tell everybody uh, your background real briefly and uh, how long you've been in uh, education and your experience, and then uh, sure. we'll go from there. If anybody's interested. Um, <laughs> I started out as a career center student, uh, went on to work before I went to college, worked my way through college, and became a, a heating and air conditioning teacher at, at a vocational school, Pittsburgh Public Schools, for 17 years. Um, went to the University of Pittsburgh, I got my director papers, went to IUP for my director papers, went to Pitt for my superintendent letter, 
and got to take over a school, was fortunate to be named director of Northern Westmoreland Career and Technology Center 10 years ago. I live in the Wexford area, and um, one day Mike and I were working at, actually at a uh, men's shelter, and with the Boy Scots, when this idea first came up, came up yeah. uh, maybe six o'clock on a Saturday morning, and we weren't allowed to do any of the work, the Boy Scots had to, so we got to shop talk, and that's how this actually uh, originated. Kurt, I can't thank you enough for bringing. And then you brought a whole team with you. We did. Um, and, and you have, I know. Uh, Mr. Spiker from Butler, he was with us at the original meeting. And I'd like to thank uh, Jackie Collin from PACTA. And there's, there's so many people here up here. I, some of them I don't know. So, But uh, I know this is a really big day for being a kid from career in tech ed. This is probably one of the biggest days we've ever had. And I'll always be a career in tech kid. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. House Bill uh, 202 provides an alternative pathway for, for career and technical students to demonstrate readiness for post-secondary success. And uh, it's clear that using the Keystone exam is not, you know, it's not a one-size-fits-all graduation option. And uh, this bill, in addition to being able to use the, the NIMS test or the NOCTI test, NIMS and NOCTI, uh, but there are other ways to show uh, the competency uh, of equivalence with um, aspects of the Keystone exam. And uh, I have to tell you, just a few people I would really like to thank. Uh, first of all, um, these educators. I, I think the governor and uh, our friends have gathered here today. Thanks for the great work you're doing. I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not just saying it. You are, you're bringing skill sets, really important professional skill sets. Um, I wish I had these skills sometimes. My, my father-in-law, uh, successful automotive mechanic, very successful businessman by having an automotive uh, mechanic and i'm always telling the boys uh, here's what you can learn from me but here's what you can learn from your grandpa I'll learn a lot more from him <laughs> um and uh and and the skill set that, that you bring to these young people i i think that it is uh, a, a school option that not enough of our uh, young women and men think about and uh i think today is going to highlight that with the governor signing this bill and um i'm, I'm just so proud to be here karen um Coates is my chief of staff, uh, Nicole Duffy, Karen Seibert. Could these three fine ladies and staff members with the house who did so much work on that raise their hands? I'm gonna have them come up later for a signing. There's Nicole, Karen, and Karen. Uh, they're just outstanding. Uh, these are two educational experts in the back, and then uh, Karen Coates is just, uh, just one of those uh, smart people who can jump into anything and help get it across the goal line, and we're very, very pleased with, with the work that they've done. I just also want to thank um, Mike Tobash. This uh, young man I I from Schuylkill County and my colleague, um, so smart, so dedicated, so passionate. He just is uh, the personification of, of um, taking an issue like career and technical education and telling everybody if Pennsylvania wants to keep growing jobs and, and providing you know, good support for families and communities, this is the path. Mike, you're you're so passionate so smart about this please come over and, and tell us about house bill 202 and where you you think pennsylvania needs to go thank you everybody so M michael thank mr speaker thank you so much you, I mean, you talk about uh coming uh, to the speaker's office uh with an issue and he quickly understands what the issue is and he takes it to task and he engages so many people. Uh, it is always a pleasure to work with your office and governor. Uh, I can tell you that uh, your administration, the department has been a joy to work with through the process and I really think we're getting it right now. Mike, you mentioned it earlier, standardized uh, one size fits all education it really does not fit most of the students in Pennsylvania all that well. Uh, knowledge is knowledge in our belief and our understanding and knowledge about skills uh, that are in demand is extremely valuable right now and important for the future of Pennsylvania. House Bill 202 acknowledges educational pathway parity. We have to understand that knowledge on a Keystone exam and knowledge in welding discern, governor, uh, are not really different. I mean, they're both knowledge and we've got to give them credit for the knowledge that they are. So we understand that the, that the Keystone graduation requirement uh, was an impediment. It was deterring some students 
from getting into career and technical schools, certainly not giving credit for the skills and the knowledge that taught that is taught in those schools, and really it was a factor uh, in the skills gap, this huge skills gap that we've got today in the, in the state of Pennsylvania. I need to also acknowledge uh, my policy director, Dr. Uh, Ali Hobbs, uh, from the day that I was elected, we started working on uh, standardized testing and how the unintended consequences and the costs of these exams have been really an impediment to an education system that really connects job creators and educators. And uh, the work has been gratifying, and the fact that we're here today, I think, uh, is worthy of celebration, and I thank you for all your hard and tireless work. Um, House Bill 202, it's about a few things. Number one, it is about student success. Make no mistake about that. It is a bill that empowers schools and teachers, and we've got a bunch of educators here today. We're so thrilled that they're in the room. Uh, one young lady back there told me, we are teachers, and that's why we're getting this done, and there's no question about it. And it is a bill that really supports job creators in our economy. Uh, we are listening to schools, we are listening to businesses, and by helping to improve the skills we are going to improve our workforce and our economic situation in the state of Pennsylvania. So I want to thank everyone for being here today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Okay, now um, the speaker and uh, Representative Tobash and I will take, uh, I'm, I'm volunteering you, we'll take questions on topic. If you have any other questions, I'll be happy to take them uh, after the, we'll have, I'll do a gag. So any questions on this topic? Yes. Um, I know that there's obviously a lot of support for this change, but was there any concern that this bill perhaps even unintentionally could create two different tracks in a way that might not be beneficial um, for the students who, who are being exempted from the, the requirement? Well, I'll let the speaker say that. I, I don't think so. I, I think one of the nice things about the American education system is that it's very porous, that, that people can go back and forth. You can decide maybe you want to be a, an astrophysicist when you're in the eighth grade, and by the eleventh grade, you can you can actually become a, an HVAC technician. And and unlike other systems in other countries, uh, the American education system allows you to to move back and forth. Uh, people of different ages have different uh, expectations of themselves. I think what we're trying to do here is say. We're, we're at once saying, yes, there are certain expectations and standards, but, but we're trying to, to make sure that we're, we're paying adequate tribute and respect to the teachers in the classroom who are actually preparing uh, our future uh, workers uh, to do whatever work they decide they, they want to do and, and whatever they think they're best fitted to do. So I think as both the speaker and, and Representative Tobach said, we're trying to be more flexible. Mike, do you want to say anything? Yes, I, I would just... In, in Go ahead. Mike and Kurt uh, chime in here, but uh, just I know there it's not the only two ways to meet the um, requirement, but NIMS and NOCTI are not easy tests. They're, they're difficult <laughs> they're, tests, right, yes. everybody? Um, yeah. but, but the curriculum prepares you to take NIMS and NOCTI, and if you don't pass them, maybe you aren't ready because it, it's measuring what you've been studying in your, your curriculum and in a very, you know, math <laughs> very significant math and, and uh, hands-on, you know, what I would call applied math and science training, really, in, in many ways. Um, so I, I think it's just that it's more, it's, correct me if I'm wrong, Kurt, or other, other uh, administrators and teachers here, but it's more, uh, it's aligned with what the educational curriculum is. Mm -hmm. that, that's really, and, and, and it enhances the value of that curriculum by recognizing that. That, that's how we, I think all of, all of us see it that way. Yeah, I mean, I think for sure, I think that if you take a look at the last 20 years, yeah. we've really narrowed curriculum. Mike, go ahead. But I think that over the last 20 years, we've really narrowed curriculum. This is an opportunity to start expanding curriculum again. I mean, there are so many career pathways that exist within the economy of Pennsylvania, and there should be more educational pathways, and this is just acknowledging that. So I understand your comment, but I think this really goes in a different direction at acknowledging and giving parity to multiple educational pathways, which we need to do a lot more of. Anything else on topic? Yes. Where do you, uh, Speaker, the Governor, where do you stand with the broader Keystone exam committee? Which the, well, the, the, uh, the Depart Department of Education has four uh, proposals to, to move uh, to a much broader uh, uh, way of, of uh, trying to assess student achievement. And this is one of those. And, and the effort overall is to do exactly what the Speaker said and what, what, what Representative Tobash said. We're trying to 
make sure that, that what we're trying to measure and test at the state level to make sure that taxpayers of Pennsylvania are getting uh, what they want from their investment, that we're also leaving m maximum flexibility for the, the teachers and their students to, to design their own course to fit the needs that they have for their own careers. I, I agree with the governor. I think your point's well made. And governor, I think you're making significant headway on the other fronts as well. And I know we have, uh, all of us have staff working in that direction, and, and the governor's uh, direction is something we're, 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 in we're in alignment with. He hit the nail on the head. Last year, the department was tasked with doing a study, and this is one element of the study. Right. Three more remain. We need to take a look at this in its in entirety. Right. We are. Okay. Anything else? Okay. If not, thank you very much. Thank you, Governor. Thank, thank you so thank you much. Thank much. you. Mike, thanks. Kurt, thanks. Oh, thanks. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Come on, everybody. We'll crowd in. We always crowd in. <laughs> Everybody just come on right up, and the governor will, will be right there. And come on, everybody just come right around the governor, and they'll be able to. Should we get another? Let's get another chair. Yeah, one more chair. Hey, JJ, can we get a third chair here? And I'll just move. Mike, Michael, you're going to go on that side. I think that's perfect. close as you can. <laughs> no, no, it, 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 and then we'll all face out outwards with the governor signing. That we're honored by this. Oh, should I be over there? Okay. Twenty-first day of June seventeen. Oh, thank you, Governor. Thank you. Thanks, all. Thank, thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you very you much. Very much. Thank you. Thank you. They're going to take some more photos. So. Okay. Was I talking? <laughs> um, hey, everybody, thank you. I think the governor's going to have some other folks come up, Kurt. Yeah. That's your pen by him. Wow. Thank, thank you, you very much, Eileen. Thank thank thanks, Eric. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'll see you, buddy. Thanks for trying. Also.